So 25 weeks out, currently on a refeed. Let's see what we're weighing. One's in 1.8. What is up guys, we are back for another prep vlog. Prep vlog two, last time I did one was at 33 weeks out. We're currently 25 weeks out. That's been about eight weeks since then. So I was last, pretty much just started a few weeks in. And uh, now obviously two two months since the previous one, so a couple months in now. And we are currently in a refeed. So last time I was not in a refeed, I was just straight dieting. Lost 21.4 pounds since then and currently on my last day of the refeed, which is today, and then we're back to the diet tomorrow. So lost about 21.4 pounds since then. So let's see how we're looking on scales, see how we're looking we're a lot fuller and leaner as well. So yeah, let's go. So as you can see from my shots, currently a lot leaner. So yeah, of course, yeah, it's been eight weeks since my last video. So I've lost about 21.4 pounds, I said earlier. Currently in a refeed, feeling really good, a lot fuller all round. Just feeling a bit flat, of course. It's, it's normal, normal to feel like that when you're losing weight. or have lost a fair amount of weight. So yeah, currently refeed last day today, and then back with the diet tomorrow. But a lot more to still come off. Currently 171.8 pounds this morning and Last time I was on stage, it was about 146.6, so we've got a little while to go. Now at least 20 pounds, maybe less. We'll see how much muscle I've gained. Primarily, I think my legs have grown the most, but we shall see once we get less shredded. So, yeah, a little while to go. But anyway, uh, off we go now. We're going to go train. We're going to train to push. So, push is what we're going to do. We're going to walk you through it all. We're going to show you kind of what I do on a push day and, yeah, do a little voiceover so you'll see what I do and why I do it and so on. And you can see how I train. So, yeah, let's get to it. So here we are starting the push session off with a cuffed lateral raise, working the medial deltoid. Here we're working in the mid range. So as you see with the cables all the way at the bottom, this working the mid range, that means it's the hardest point. The resistance problem with the hardest point is at the mid range of the movement, so middle part. And this one's really, really good to get started, to get the shoulders nice and warm before we get into some presses. Uh, it feels really, really good and I much prefer the cuff, it feels far greater than the D-handle. And here we're getting into some pec fly, so I like to essentially pre-exhaust or pre-activate the chest pre-pressing. I find for me, growing my pecs always been a struggle, so I want to make sure I can get as much blood into them before I press, where you get them activated, and then when I do press, they're way more switched on. So I can actually feel the presses and it will feel yeah just a lot lot better. So I find doing them before really gets them working, but get a lot of blood into them, and then when we press, they're gonna feel on fire and you should be able to feel your presses far more. And here we have a low dumbbell incline chest press, third exercise in. Again, we're thinking about really bobbing them up nicely, 45 degree angle with the elbows. Wrist in line with the elbows, pressing the bicep into the chest, slightly retracting the scapula so the chest is up, and really, really thinking about squeezing that bicep into that chest at the top, getting some really good contractions in the upper pec and front delt region. And I like to go just below 90 degrees, it feels comfortable for me, but you'll be fine if you go to 90 degrees, it's totally fine, no stress, but go as hard as you can, this is the top set here, so maxing out as much effort as possible. So here we have the second set, the back off set, so we just did the top set, got 42, 46, and here we're doing 36 and I got 11. So aiming for a high rep range here after the heavier set. Again, same sort of principle, really think about making the nice reps, good range, feeding it, and your know, maximum effort really. So obviously it's a high rep range here, so a slightly lighter weight. And this is kind of like the same principle I like to go for most of my exercises, a top set and back off, uh, primarily especially on the bigger lifts, like the chest press and the shoulder press and so on. Um, but same sort of principle, so you're pressing up, pushing the bicep into the chest, really think about you know, feeding it and not like jolting the weight, especially when it gets hard. 
and it's quite common for that to happen too. Neutral shoulder press machine here, very hard machine this one. I do like it, but it's extremely hard. 72.5 for five reps. So again, top set here, maximum effort, keeping everything as tight as you can, really pushing up, elbows in line with the wrists here, makes it even harder. So don't let the elbows flare back too much and you realize how much harder that is. So second set here, the back off set, we did 60 kilos for 10 reps. Again, maximum effort, always working to failure. That's how I train and keeping the form as tight as I can throughout, especially on those hard reps and starts to slow down at the end, as you can see here. I'm able to keep it as tight as I can, I brace in, I lock in, I push through my feet. And that's where you get a lot of the power from. You can see, getting those large reps up, you have to push through your feet a lot to get it up. So here we have a cuffed lateral working in the lengthened range. So you see the cable is up hip height and we're trying to make it challenging in the lengthened range, which is essentially at the bottom next to my hip is where it's going to be the most hard, essentially, it's hardest, heaviest. And as you see, we're doing one in the mid range and one in the lengthened range because we want some big shoulders. We want to work it and challenge it in all ranges. Here we have some incline cable flies, so more pec volume. So I want to get as much pec volume as I can in. So extra three sets here, get as much out of them. Again, working more in the upper pec region. And it feels really good, this one. Really, really good. I like this one. I've had this in, in my training program for a good while, this exercise, as it feels really, really good. And you want to get as much upper pec as possible, because that's one area that a lot of guys lack in. And it really builds that, like, essentially that shelf in that pec. And it really just fills out the physique and fills out clothes when you wear them as well. So it's just a good look and get as much there as I can. Um, so adding in these flies is essential. The dual tricep rope extension, far, far, far better than the single rope. So if you can get two, then definitely get two. It allows for more range of motion. As you can see, I go past my body essentially, whereas with the normal rope, I'm stuck. Can only go down to about my legs. See, so I go past now allowing for more range of motion, meaning more tricep growth. So if you can get them in the gym, if you can find them, grab them. If not, stick to the one, but you get a lot more bang for your buck using this. So here we have the final exercise of the push session. This is a overhead single arm rope extension. This essentially puts more emphasis on the long head of the tricep, which is the back of the tricep. So you want to be always doing some overhead variations when it comes to triceps alongside your normal standard push downs. So definitely input some of them. So it's just a Good one to end on. I really like you can really focus on keeping everything tight and put all the focus on just that one arm. And yeah, it just feels really, really good. So definitely a good one to end the session on. But that is the video wrapped up. The full log two and push session done. Hope you enjoyed that. Subscribe and like for more. And here's me just doing some random poses at the end. See ya.